as usual, I had to go to the US to learn what is cool in Austria. So they told me there's a professor Fuchula doing some real-time brain analysis. And when I come, came back from the US to Europe, I just approached his lab and started my master thesis about brain-computer interfaces. It was the first BCI meeting in Rensselaerville, 99. So at this time it was a very small group, about 20 labs, I don't know, 50 people. And yeah, it was the start of BCI research. So a lot of friendships came from this meeting. Starting BCI groups, it was Pfurtschler's lab, Bierbaumer's lab and Wolpoff's lab. So, um, so it was mostly EEG-based uh, BCI systems. But later on, we came also into ECOG-based systems. So the whole US group uh, around Gavin Schell, Gary Gluthert, Jeff Ogeman, uh, Kai Miller and so on. And now, yeah, now we are much more invasive than some years ago. Probably that we were the, the first company who provided real-time analysis systems for EEG signals. So in 1999 there were about three real-time systems all over the world. And now there are several hundred installations and my company helped also to achieve that. ALS patients are of course a target group for BCI systems for communication with the P300 speller for example. But for a few years now people are also looking into stroke rehabilitation. So you try to activate the motor cortex to use brain plasticity for the rehabilitation process. But I think this is a very useful application for the future. There are many stroke patients. You can use it at home, you can do the BCI training yourself. You, yeah, you're, you're very motivated to do the rehabilitation and it's a good application. We are making definitely progress. So I, I did, for example, the first 100% accuracy recording 99, or it was actually 98, and we needed uh, six days of training to achieve that. And nowadays we can have a spelling device with less than five minutes of training with perfect accuracy. And this is clearly an improvement of all the sensors, the signal analysis, the training concepts, how to give the stimuli. So the field uh, made a huge progress over in the last few years. We have a quite range of different sensors. So the newest one are dry electrodes, where you don't require jail for the montage. They give you basically the same BCI accuracy and EEG spectrum and quality as jail-based electrodes, but they are, of course, more sensitive to noise. So you have to be more careful if you, in your experimental setup to use it. The big advantage is that you don't have to clean your hair. So it's easier with patients, for example, to assemble it and disassemble it. European Union regulations are very good and sharp. They are even stronger than FDA. So what we always do is we go beforehand for the CE certification before we do FDA because they really look at every device and check leakage currents and all this stuff. So this is good. But we don't have regulations yet for BCI systems and this would also be good to have a normative for BCIs to make sure what the BCI is and you, that you're allowed to label your product to be a BCI product. There are also normatives for evoked potentials, for example, for EEG equipment, for ECG equipment and similarly it could be for BCI. And they should focus on basic research questions to, to make BCI systems faster and better. So in my opinion, the researcher shouldn't work on assistive technology combinations of BCI systems because this is mostly engineering work, so somebody else could do it. But it's important to have ba basic research done in, in the BCI field.
that's easy real time brain signal analysis to control an external device. As usual, funding can never be enough, but they should also focus on basic research questions. So it's not so interesting, in my opinion, for a consortium to do engineering work, to produce something. This can be done by companies. Researchers have to do the studies behind it. And of course, they should work on all, all modalities beside EEG. They should also look at ECOG and spikes, because you can learn from every single cell or ECOG recording a lot, also for EEG, that's important. The conference is very nice, so the concept with high-level speakers is very good and people get a nice overview of what can be done. And it's also important to see the invasive work going on in the US because it's not happening like that and in Europe, that should be changed.